Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast is all about our journey into the woods of ourselves, getting to know who we are, where we are, and where we're going in life so that we can create the life that we want to live. It's about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. It's also about mindset. Our beliefs are such an important part of this journey, and there are so many ways for us to change our mindset so that we can more easily live a life of expansive joy. This podcast is also about going literally into the woods and spending time in nature, and how that can help us on our own personal journey of self-knowledge. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now let's get into this week's episode. Hello, adventurers, and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 456. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another exciting guest, Jenny Mowbray, who was a guest just late last year in December on episode 438, where we talked about solo travel and adventure when you're in a relationship, is back. And today we are talking about how to fund your adventures with a flexible portfolio career. As soon as we wrapped up our last episode, I knew I wanted Jenny to come back on the show to talk about how to create a portfolio career, which you may or may not know what that means. I discovered the concept when I read one of Jenny's blog posts, which is called Freedom, Freelance, and Flexibility, Build a Mosaic Portfolio Career, and Ditch the 9 to 5 for Good. In it, she shares her tips on how to move from one main income stream like a job to a career that's made up of various income streams like freelance gigs and more. Now, this topic is very timely for me because my business has really changed over the last year, but mostly in the last like six months or so. I've shifted from managing big long-term projects to smaller ones like translating books and writing articles for other websites. It's definitely been a transition and it's required more than a few mindset shifts for me. But I'm learning new things and most importantly, I'm becoming a better writer as a result. So this is going to be a good thing in the end, but in the beginning it was a bit difficult. So I'm really happy to have Jenny come on the show today to talk about how to create this type of career, to create this type of business, and how to make the shift from one large income stream, like if you have a job, to this type of career. Because this is a great way to fund your adventures and your travel. We talk about this in the show, but it's a really great way to fit into your adventures. So Who is Jenny Mowbray? Jenny is a passionate advocate of embarking on solo travel adventures when in a relationship. Having traveled solo when she was single, she was surprised by the curious reaction she received from family and friends when she continued to enjoy solo trips after she met her partner. Such was her fascination that she has begun to write about the topic on her blog, Orchids to Olives. Jenny believes wholeheartedly that after overcoming initial barriers that the idea of solo travel sometimes represents, it holds many benefits on a personal and relationship level and can deepen the connection with ourselves and our loved ones. So what are you going to learn in this week's episode? We talk about what is a portfolio career and why you might want to build one. What are the benefits of a portfolio career? There are many. The mindset shifts needed to create a portfolio career. How to start building one. How long does it take to build a portfolio career? What types of jobs can you build into a portfolio career? How to fit freelancing into your travels and adventures? And how to take time off when you've got a portfolio career? So I hope you find this episode interesting and useful. Here you go. Hello, Jenny, and welcome back. Hi, Holly. Great to be back. Thank you. I'm excited to have you. So why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Okay, sure. So I'm Jenny. And as you mentioned, we're going to talk about portfolio careers. Mm -hmm. And so that is my background in terms of my career. I started off as an FE teacher, but now I've kind of developed that into a portfolio career around education. And also I have a blog called Orchids to Olive, where I talk about a range of different things, really. It's a travel blog, so I talk about traveling and solo travel and also about a portfolio career and how you can develop one. Yeah, so that's me. I had never actually heard the term portfolio career (laughs) until I came across your blog on your website, and I really liked the concept of it. So what is a portfolio career for someone who might not know what that is? Well, it's basically the opposite to having one full-time permanent job. Mm -hmm. 
It's the idea of having multiple jobs and multiple income streams. So that could be a combination of part-time employment, temporary contracts, projects, consultancy work or self-employment, for instance. And you might work within one particular field of expertise or even specialize in a skill set and apply it across different industries. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you even have different fields of expertise and work across different industries. There really are no rules. Mm, I like that. So why <laughs> might someone want to build a portfolio career rather than a traditional like one job career path? Well, I think first off, the term portfolio career is It may sound relatively new, but juggling multiple jobs certainly is not. People have juggled multiple jobs across the globe for decades. But I think what is new is the shift in thinking in that a portfolio career is no longer the kind of poor cousin to a full time job, which most people have always kind of aspired to. And instead, it's making that conscious decision to have a portfolio career. And I think The reason why you might want to do that is because there's kind of the shift in thinking and how people value work-life balance. We all want to have a more balanced lifestyle so that, you know, you can pursue personal interests or travel or, I don't know, just spend time with loved ones and relax a bit more. It's that idea of uh, work isn't everything. It's about creating a balance. And for me, for instance... That was really important, but also it's freedom Mm -hmm. and the ability to live life on my terms. I think some people are just not really cut out for the nine to five. I'm certainly one of those people. I really don't like having to get up at the same time every day, go Mm -hmm. to a job, do the same thing, see the same people, come back and do the same thing day in, day out. It's not for me. And I think a lot of people are like that. So that's perhaps why you want to develop a portfolio career. Mm. I think those are really, really good points. And I found that our business, my husband and I have a business together, has kind of the last year or so been moving towards that. We used to have, you know, really big clients, really long projects. And due to COVID and other things, the way we work with clients has shifted And we've moved away from those big projects just because they haven't been available to us and moving towards kind of little freelance gigs. So we've been doing translate, like right now I'm translating a novel from Spanish to English. My husband's been doing some subtitles and some translation of subtitles. He's been doing translation like Berger projects as well. But we've moved away from kind of those big project management things into into something that's very much like this. And it's it's been a huge mindset shift. Yeah, I think a lot of people are. I think, for instance, with me, my background was education. I was a full-time teacher in FE. And as you kind of gathered, I I wasn't that keen on it. (laughs) And so it was kind of natural for me to develop along the lines of education. So my portfolio Mm -hmm. career consists of various different things, including uh, work related to quality assurance and examining Mm -hmm. and writing exam papers and some online teaching. And I've also dabbled with various other things along the way. And it's just this idea of having lots of different income streams Mm -hmm. so that then if one of them falls down, you've got others to pick up quite easily. Mm. Yeah. And I think that can feel a little bit precarious in the beginning as you're putting together all of your different income streams. But I think in the long run, it's a lot safer because if you have yeah. just kind of the one big client or the one big job, then you're really stuck if that something happens to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It offers more security. So Jenny, <laughs> what are the benefits of building a portfolio career? Oh, well, I think there are many, actually. The first one I've already kind of talked about a little bit, but it's the idea of flexibility and freedom. So you're not bound by the nine to five. And, mm-hmm. you know, you can take time off when you please. If you don't want to work one day a week, then you can take that time off. Or, you know, maybe during the middle of the day, for instance, you want to do some yoga or go Mm. swimming and you have that flexibility to be able to organize your life the way that you please. So that's a big one for me. I think it's, you know, the, the idea of flexibility. I think that's Um, really, really important. And, you know, I've been self-employed for so long, I forget what it's like to have a nine to five job, but I go for a run in the middle of the day and I couldn't do that if I had a job. Absolutely, I know. I have to reorganize everything. 
Yeah. yeah. And you realise that because you do do that quite naturally and I do now, but it's actually quite a privilege to be able yeah, to go and do that when you feel like it. So, yeah, it's great. Another benefit is location independence. If you aspire, for example, to be a digital nomad, working wherever you please in the world, developing a portfolio career is certainly one way forward in order to be able to do that. Admittedly, you know, now with after the pandemic, there are a lot more people being able to do that with employers as well. But yeah, it's a good way to be able to find work that fits that lifestyle if that's something that you're wanting to do. Mm, absolutely. Um, so I think that's another benefit. Another benefit, I think, is the old saying, variety is the spice of life. I think yeah. that's quite true. When you have a portfolio career, you know, no day is really the same. Mm. Well, some days are the same. <laughs> <laughs> but for instance, maybe you want to set up part-time business as a jewellery maker. Mm. Uh, maybe another day you're working in a coffee shop or maybe yeah. another day you're blogging. It's that idea of variety. And I, I think that's really good for you. I think mm. that's healthy. So that's a great benefit. Another benefit is that you get to develop multiple skills. If you have multiple roles, therefore follows that you have a diverse range of transferable skills, which is really crucial in today's market. You know, gone are the days of a job for life when you yeah. could rely on one skill set to kind of see you throughout your career. Yeah. You really need to be able to adapt to market trends so you'll really benefit from having that range of skills. Mm. And I think doing this kind of career, having a portfolio career, you become very quick at learning new skills and less afraid of taking yes. something new on yes. because you know that you have that ability to learn quite quickly. If I give you an example, when the pandemic hit and first lockdowns happened and a lot of my work kind of vanished overnight. Mm -hmm. You know, I was left with, I would say I was left with about probably 40% of my work. And, you know, I was pretty worried about where I was going to, uh, where my income was going to come from. So I started looking around and, and wondering, you know, how I could kind of pull that extra income in. And I came across an advert. I think it was an expression of interest, actually, on an email. And it was for an online ESL presenter for mm -hmm. interactive courseware in China. And it basically involved being in a studio in front of a camera and delivering lessons, reading from an auto cue. And it was way, way out of my comfort zone. Mm. And I got the job. I was freaking out quite a bit because it was way <laughs> out of my comfort zone. But, you know, I needed to earn some money. And so I went along and did the online presenting. I picked up many valuable skills. You know, I had to stand in front of a camera. I had to take directions from a director and essentially be a kind of kids presenter and even mime singing, which is a very, very <laughs> valuable skill, I yeah. think. <laughs> <laughs> um, but more than that, the actual, what I kind of got from that was confidence. And I felt reassured in my adaptability to be able to learn and take on new skills when I needed them. And I think when you're just in, well, from my experience, when I was in a full time job teaching, mm -hmm. I was quite scared of branching out of yeah, what yeah. I knew. Well, I was very institutionalized and I was confident at planning lessons. Mm -hmm. I was confident delivering a lesson. But outside of that, the thought of doing something else was quite nerve wracking. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, I think we develop multiple skills and that's really, really useful throughout it's life. And sometimes those skills can, like as you work on some type of skill or work that can help kind of improve other skills that you have. I don't know. I've noticed Absolutely. that now that I'm doing more translation work, like when you're translating from one language to another, you're really paying attention to how each sentence is constructed and how uh -huh. they've chosen certain words to say the thing they want to say. And I think that's making me a better writer because, you know, of course, I'm oh, a writer, yeah. I write books, I write blog posts. I'm much more aware of how I use language because I'm translating how other people use language. Oh, it's been yeah, really useful. Yeah. What language are you translating just out of interest? Spanish to English. Oh, brilliant. And then my husband does English to Spanish because <laughs> he's a native right. Spanish speaker. <laughs> so we actually work together quite a bit. So like if I get a sentence where I'm like, I really don't know what to do with this, <laughs> like we'll oh, sit right. down and we'll discuss it. So it's really, really interesting. I think we're both going to become better writers out of this. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Brilliant. So are there um, any other benefits of portfolio careers that you'd like to discuss? Yeah, I think another benefit is that 
you kind of develop a more open mindset. I think when you are no longer confined to the four walls of the traditional workplace, Mm -hmm. you know, your career is dynamic and it is constantly evolving. And you know that you can take any path that you fancy. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of flows over into life in general. And you kind of become much more open to possibility and less scared of change, Mm. less rigid. Work's a big part of our lives. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of makes sense that if your work is more fluid, that then your life becomes more fluid and feels freer. So I think that's a really big benefit of having a portfolio career. I agree. I think when people get stuck in one job for too long, it can be really scary if you lose that job or if it becomes uncomfortable or unpalatable for any reason and you want to change. It can be really scary. But when you're self-employed and when you've got like a lot of plates, you know, things that you're doing, it's so much easier. It really just makes you more kind of flexible better at making decisions yeah so it's a whole yeah, different mindset yeah yeah and I think also that makes you feel much more confident as well mm-hmm. I think when you you have that control over your work it kind of leads to a, a natural deeper sense of confidence in your own abilities yeah I'm thinking back to when I had a permanent position and this is me this is not everybody of mm-hmm. course but I always felt that my confidence was kind of constantly dangling around my knees because it didn't matter how much effort I put into what I was doing. It was always at somebody else's say so as yeah. to whether it was good enough. Yeah. And it wasn't really until I started working for myself and have working in this manner that I began to realize that I was pretty good at the various things that I did and that made me feel much more confident and have a higher level of Mm -hmm. self-esteem and I think also you know confidence is not just about being good at something is it Mm -hmm. you know I don't think we're put on this planet to kind of just be a slave to our jobs I think when you're feeling great is about living your life to the full and living life the way you want to live and I think if you want to feel amazing and create that well-rounded lifestyle then a portfolio career is actually a really really good way to go about that. Mm, I love that. So it can be scary to make the jump from a single job career to a portfolio career. How can someone get started building that portfolio career? Well, it's not a straightforward path. (laughs) You know, it's not something that you can't just decide to give up your job and then walk into a portfolio career the next day. It's it's something that you really have to develop over time. Hmm. Well, my first step, um, it doesn't sound highly practical, but my first step would be that you need to follow your passion, follow your bliss. You know, I think that passion is everything. It will drive you to succeed and bring about those new opportunities. Several years ago, I came across a writer called Joseph Campbell, and he really, really influenced kind of like how I was thinking. And he, I read a quote, and it really kind of changed how I thought about my work and also about our, my life. Mm-hmm. And I quite like to read that quote to yes, you, if that's all right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the quote is, Follow your bliss. If you do follow your bliss, you put yourself on a kind of track that has been there all the while waiting for you. And the life you ought to be living is the one you are living. When you can see that, you begin to meet people Mm. who are in the field of bliss and they open the doors to you. I say, follow your bliss and don't be afraid. Doors will open. That really kind of changed how I thought about things. You know, it's simply basically, you know, follow your passion and and doors will open. But I thought about my life and I wasn't following my bliss. My bliss was travel. That's something that I'd always wanted to do since I was very young. I couldn't really do it in the job that I was doing. Yeah. As a teacher. um, You've got to be in the classroom. (laughs) You've got to be in the classroom. Yeah. But I found that I would book a holiday and I'd look forward to that holiday. And then when I was on the holiday, two or three days before having to go back, maybe more than two or three days, Mm -hmm. I'd start to dread having to go back. And that's no way to live. That's not a good way to be living. And so I thought to myself, okay, so what's my bliss travel? So I put that center stage as my primary motivator and started to envisage my life around it. 
And, you know, I didn't know how it would happen, but I kind of knew it would. And I'm not kind of talking magic here. It's simply a mindset. I think that when you adopt a bliss or passion orientated focus, you become much more open yep. to the opportunities around you. And rather than focusing on what you don't have mm. and what's bad and how difficult things are, you actually start to see a way forward and you start to see opportunities. Yes. Those opportunities, you know, they might not seem amazing. They might not be high money earners. Yeah. They might not be necessarily things within your skill set. But once you decide on a way forward, once you decide that, you know, you want to develop a portfolio career, you start to say yes to things. And I think um, that's really important. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. So several years ago, I was working two days a week. I'd managed to reduce my permanent job down to two days. So I was mm -hmm. in the classroom two days. I still wasn't happy. You know, if you, if you don't particularly like your job, then it doesn't matter how many days you do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still not great. And one evening I was sat on the sofa looking out the window, kind of fantasizing about handing in my notice and I started scrolling the internet and I came across online teaching, teaching Chinese children English in online. And this was before the pandemic. So before lots of teaching went online. Mm. And I saw that job and I thought it's not a huge amount of money. Mm. Um, you know, I'm not going to earn that much from it. But could it replace a small amount of money and help me pay the bills and just give me a small amount of security? Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah, it will. And so the very next day I handed in my notice and started doing some online teaching. And that enabled me to then fully break out and have a portfolio career in full. You know, I started following new paths and new doors opened. And yeah, that was the start, really. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I love that because it does it does take a huge mindset shift of focusing away from kind of the big salary or the whatever size salary you're used to into kind of smaller bits of income. And I think that yeah. can be kind of scary as well because it's like, well, a little bit's coming from here, a little bit's coming from there. Like, how do I put this together? So yeah. how long do you think it takes the average person, and obviously this is varied, to build a portfolio <laughs> career? Because it does take some time to kind of put the different yeah. pieces together. Yeah, I think it really depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a rule. Unless you've got savings in the bank that you have yep. to spend, I think you really do need to ease in gently. Yep. And I think quite a few people start just in their spare time. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, maybe you drop one day at work. That's what I did. I dropped one day at work. And then gradually, as I started to build things up, I gradually reduced my hours at work. Hmm. But first, you need to decide on an area of expertise that you particularly yep. want to develop. Mm -hmm. It could be related to your current job, like mine was. Or perhaps it's a hobby. You know, maybe hmm. you have a hobby like, I don't know, design or gardening or yeah. baking. And you decide that that's an area that you want to kind of build. And yeah, so just doing that one day or two days hmm. a week, really. I guess you could start by making a list of all the things that you can do, the things you know how to do, the things you like yeah, doing, and absolutely. kind of go from there. Yeah, definitely. And you also need to be very proactive. Yes. Um, this is not something that's just going to fall in your lap. You've got to put yourself out there, which is why you need that passion as well, mm. you know. So you've got to be on the lookout for new opportunities. Even now, I have a reliance on certain periodic contracts that kind of always come my way. But I never, I kind of never rest on my laurels. I'm always pursuing new avenues. And this kind of way of living, it's not for everybody. No, there is no. that element of insecurity. But I guess I kind of like to see it as a challenge. It's a bit like a jigsaw and putting all the pieces together. Yep. And I quite enjoy that. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. I was finding it challenging. Now it's kind of coming together and it's a different way of approaching things for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think another tip is talking to people. Yes. I think networking. It's up to you to inform people when you're available. Before the pandemic, I used to go to lots of training events and networking events and not so much now, but several areas of work, several contracts I've got through just having coffee and chatting to people. Mm. And I'm no, I'm certainly not pushy. I'm not a self sell person, but it's yeah. just simply just talking about what you can do and what you can do for people. 
I also cast out feelers. So I've yes. got various different organizations that I work for mm-hmm. and various points in the year, I kind of cast out emails mm-hmm. just to see if any work comes back. Yep. And it was something that I felt really awkward yeah. doing at first But now I kind of see it as part of my job. And I think also it's a way of letting companies know that you're available and Mm. that you have valuable skills and that actually you're doing them a favor. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you're reminding them that you exist because if they work with a number of different freelancers, they might forget all of the people that they can work with. Totally. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because a lot of companies have a a large number of people on their books, so you can easily be overlooked. Mm. You know, you just mentioned freelancers. Another good way is to advertise yourself on freelance job boards. I really came across the online job board Fiverr. I think oh, yeah. that's how yep. you say it. I think yep. is it F-I-V-E-R. Yeah. Yep. Um, and there's a whole range of uh, professional services on there. And you can upload your profile and people can re- request you from editing to digital marketing and so on. It's not something that I've done, but I was recently... Um, kind of looking to commission someone for a book cover yep. and mm-hmm. I went on there and I found you know a variety of different people mm. so that's a good way as well kind of putting yep. yourself out there absolutely yeah I've used Fiverr for years to hire people for like little photoshop Have jobs or yeah things like yeah. that it's been fantastic I mean, and there's I, others as well isn't yeah. there so I think there's one called freelancer and yeah. you know there's obviously LinkedIn and you can use social media and mm. I think also you need to be very open to opportunities I yes. think it's a good idea to not limit yourself I think perhaps when you first start out you'll probably have a particular area of expertise that you want to pursue but I think the trick is not to not to limit yourself yeah I think when you've got that one area going and money starting to trickle in you can then sort of start to consider other income streams the more avenues of income you have Mm -hmm. the more security you have like you said before so for instance maybe initially you decide you want to do copywriting and then once that's going nicely, you then decide you want to do write online articles or mm. editing and so on. So, yeah, it's that kind of ability to constantly take on new opportunities. Mm. Yeah. And being open to things because you never know until you try it if you like it. You might yeah. try something and go, oh, no, you know, I didn't like that. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, but yeah. you might find something new that you never thought because it was just yeah. outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's Mm. happened to me quite a lot. (laughs) Mm. And I think, you know, also not being afraid of, like you just said, branching out of your comfort zone and learning new skills. You know, the more you learn, the more skills you learn, the quicker and easier it becomes to take on new information. Mm -hmm. Our brains, you know, they're like a muscle. You know, the more you use it, the better it becomes. We're in such a kind of fortunate position these days, aren't we, that we have so much information available that if you want to learn something maybe you've always for instance wanted to be a yoga instructor Mm. well you can you know you have that time to be able to do that which is great yeah absolutely so Jenny what types of jobs can you build into a portfolio career it seems like it's kind of infinite opportunity I think it is infinite (laughs) yeah (laughs) I guess the question is what can't you build yeah exactly (laughs) yeah Um, yeah I think a portfolio career can really be anything you know if it can yeah, if it can be done part time, well, it doesn't even have to be part time. Yeah. Part time, you might do some, something full time for a while and then do the other things. You know, mm. yeah. I mean, I guess you know, if you're highly skilled, you might be a surgeon, for instance. I mm. guess you know, would you want a portfolio career? I don't know, maybe not. But I think, yeah, pretty much any job can be fitted fit into a portfolio career. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of jobs that, you know, you would think as being kind of traditional full time jobs like, I don't know, marketing or or things like that. You know, there are always places that are looking for maternity leave covers or, you know, yeah. things like that yeah. and, or in part time. So you can always kind of look and see what companies need either for part time or on a short term basis and give it a try. See what you think of that company. Learn, mm-hmm. You'll always learn something new from working for yeah. a new, a new yeah, place. Yeah, so, absolutely. So you've mentioned that one of the things you do is online English teaching. What is that like? Because I've been a language teacher before, both English and Spanish, <laughs> but always in person. So I'm really curious about well, this online teaching. Well, I'll be honest, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> okay. What was it like? <laughs> <laughs> I did do that. And yeah, I taught Chinese children online 
and it was great it was I really enjoyed it it was good Mm. fun and the children were lovely but that came to an end in uh, the autumn because the regulations for hiring foreign tutors changed in China so yeah yeah so that all kind of came to an end so yeah and I've not decided whether I'm going to continue with any teaching yet Mm. but it was good it certainly filled a gap that I needed at the time so Mm. it was good so how do you fit your freelancing and your portfolio career into your travels? Do you work while you travel or do you take time off or how does that work? Well, it depends. It depends on how long I'm going for. So, if, mm-hmm. you know, if it's just a short holiday, then, yeah, I'll take the time off. I'm not, I don't really want to work while I'm, you know, just going somewhere for a week or you know, a few days. But to be honest, I don't really take that many holidays like that. I tend to go for longer periods of time. So I'll give you a couple of examples. So in the autumn, I went um, to the Canaries for a month. Nice. Yeah, which was lovely after not being away for quite a long time. And I think I probably worked about three days a week while I was there. Mm -hmm. The thing with my work is that it's very seasonal. And so it gives me a great deal of freedom to be able to kind of travel throughout the late autumn and winter I work like crazy this time of year sort of spring and summer but then in the autumn and winter I have a bit of freedom so yeah and I worked maybe three days a week in the Canaries and then in January I went to Sri Lanka for six weeks which was fabulous <laughs> and I decided that I didn't particularly want to work whilst I was there I could have done but I wanted to kind of free up my time because I was concentrating on other things I was concentrating on writing a book and so I kind of wanted to clear my head and so I did do a little bit of work while I was there but not that much so yeah it really depends it depends on how long I'm going for and the time of year Mm. um, as to as to whether I carry on working. But the great thing is, is that all my work is online, so I can take it with me, which is fab. Mm. So how easy or hard is it to take time off? I mean, if you're taking, you know, four or six weeks off, do you just kind of plan your projects around that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, my personally, my work is very seasonal. So I work very hard and I make sure that I save my money Mm -hmm. um, so that I have money to see me through the laws. And I think that's the most important thing, really, with um, having a portfolio career. You know, nobody's going to give you holiday pay, which is obviously a little bit of a downside. Yeah. Um, And so you need to make sure you obviously save um, in order to be able to take time off. But I think the other thing for me anyway, I don't know if you feel the same, but because I really enjoy what I do, you know, I enjoy my work. I don't get up in the morning dreading my work or anything like that. So when I do go away and I do take some work with me, it doesn't feel like a massive bind. It just feels part of life. It feels part of the bigger picture. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do you you kind of feel a little bit like that? I do. Yes. I think it's really interesting what you said about, you know, there's no paid time off like in a job. And I think that's really, really important. Like people need to plan. If this is going to be your way forward, you really need to plan financially. Again, I've yeah. been self-employed forever, so that's yeah. normal to me. But I think for a lot of people, you know, you're, if you're not working, you're not getting paid. So you do need to plan in advance. Yeah, yeah, you do. You have yeah. to. So, but it's uh, worth it. It is. It is. It absolutely <laughs> is. It's just a different lifestyle. <laughs> it is a different lifestyle. It takes organization. Yeah. You've got to be good at organizing. Yep. And you've got to be good at time management yes. as well, without a doubt, if you kind of just think that things are going to come to you and somebody else is going to manage your time for you and give you a holiday you know this is probably not the kind of way that you want to work but if you want freedom if you want to organize and have control over your own lifestyle then it's really cool yeah absolutely and I think that's really important what you said about time management and managing not just your your money but your time because if you're managing lots of little different projects you're going to have lots of little deadlines and you yeah. need to make your deadlines. So yeah, one of the of... first things I did when we kind of started shifting the way we started working, I bought a whiteboard for my office. It's on the wall next to my desk and it has all my deadlines on it. This book yeah. is due on this date, this other book, like where am I with it? What do I need? It's really, really important. If I have an article that I'm writing, when does that do? When are the edits do? Like, it's really important to keep your deadlines organized. Yeah, yeah, I have a whiteboard too. (laughs) (laughs) Love the whiteboards. (laughs) So Jenny, your portfolio career has changed a lot since you first started. What kind of elements make up your portfolio career right now? Well, it's not actually changed that much. 
the main change is that I no longer do any online teaching. Mm-hmm. But my portfolio career consists of quality assurance, writing exam papers, um, mm. examining and you know, various other things, such as like when I said about the ESL uh, presenting, mm. little things like that have kind of slotted their way in oh, nice. as I've gone along. But the bulk of my career is around those key areas. So it sounds like you've kind of kept the same theme over the years, just some same things theme, have come along. Yeah, yeah, it's the same theme, but changes slightly over time. Mm. So Jenny, do you have any final tips for our listeners about how to create a portfolio career or how to get started or things you need to think about? Well, like I said, my first tip is definitely have passion. If this is something that you want to do, then you've got to be excited about it. Yes. And yeah you've got to follow your heart really ease in gently just maybe develop one area at a time drop one day then develop maybe another area and drop another day ease in so that you build your work up gradually and you feel more confident Mm. be proactive and talk to people and just be open be open to the opportunities around you and there's so much out there, you know, there's yeah. so many opportunities these days. So hmm. but yeah, just be open. And I think you've mentioned a couple of times about dropping a day or two at your job. I think a lot of people are so used to working five days a week, they don't realize that's a possibility. But I've heard so mm. many stories of people shifting their work from five days a week to four days a week to three days a week. So it's always worth asking. Yeah, See if it's possible for you. Don't just assume that it's not. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's this kind of notion as well that if you drop just one day that you're going to lose a lot of money, but that's often not the case. Mm -hmm. I think when you go down to four days, once you take tax into account and all the rest of it, it's kind of you don't actually lose that much. And I think, you know, if you're quite intent on developing another area of work, then you'll start to get money in quite quickly anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. So do you have any new trips planned? Where, where are you off traveling next? I don't actually. <laughs> no, I just came back from Sri Lanka. Yep. And now I'm kind of full throttle in work mode yeah. with very little time to kind of think for a while. But no, I'm sure I will have an, another trip planned um, quite soon. Yeah. Mm, I look, what I look about forward you? to hearing you, about that. Are you Uh, thinking of going anywhere soon? Yes, I'm walking the coast to coast with some friends at the end of the month. So we'll be away for two weeks. I haven't taken two full weeks off in a long time. So I'm really (laughs) looking forward to this. And it's going to be offline because we'll be in the middle of nowhere. Oh, amazing. It will truly be time off. So Yeah, yeah, that sounds wonderful. Excited. So Jenny, where can people find you online and learn more about what you do? Okay, so I have a website called All Kids to Olives, Mm -hmm. and I post on there sometimes, (laughs) not (laughs) quite as often as I (laughs) perhaps want to, and I'm also on Instagram, again, sometimes I'm quite active and sometimes I'm not, and yeah, I also have Facebook, so yeah, yeah, that's where you can find me, All Kids to Olives. I like your Instagram because I can see where you've been traveling. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And what is the story behind the name Orchids to Olives? Oh, interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I was coming up with a whole range of different names. And you know how you do. I had it all on paper and lots of different names. And I was actually in Malaysia with my son a few years ago. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was telling my son the names and he was saying, you know, they're rubbish. (laughs) (laughs) It's always good to have an unfiltered. (laughs) And I think I saw an orchid and I thought about, we have a house in Italy. So olives, obviously synonymous with Italy. Yes. And the name orchid to olives came into my head because orchids apparently grow all over the planet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are many varieties. And so, yeah, this name just suddenly came into my head and I said it to my son and he was like, yeah, that's cool. Oh, wow. (laughs) And so that kind of stuck. I like it. I like it. It's good. Because it gets you thinking, like, what is this? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us again. I think this was super interesting and useful. And I think creating a portfolio career is a great way for people to fund their adventures and their travels and and to just live a more flexible life. It's a different way to live. 
yeah um it's much more dynamic and yeah it's good absolutely well thank you okay thank you very much holly Please drop me a line and let me know what you thought of this week's episode. You can email me at holly at hollywharton.com or find me online and get in touch there. If you enjoyed this episode, you might want to check out these related ones. 447, I talk with Jen Reese about how to balance travel and adventure with a full-time job. 444, I talk with Roxana Hussein about adventures in freelance travel writing. 441, I talk about the adventures you want. 438 was my other episode with Jenny. We talk about solo travel and adventure when you're in a relationship. And finally, 420 is another solo episode. I talk about how to use your intuition to find your next adventures. So thank you so much for listening. Please remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 456 for the show notes on this episode. And in the meantime, happy trails to you. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.